what is going on everyone welcome for the first time or back to another DLJ works video and this video is actually a tutorial I'm going to actually show you how to do a pure with no JavaScript CSS 3d animation well 3d flip card animation effect all right <laughs> as we can see on the front of our card we have Goku and then on the back we're going to have Piccolo now there's an interesting trick in terms of why this can actually happen without JavaScript and we're actually using what's some sort of a hack and I'm going to, sh going to show you what that HTML5 hack is here in a second. Let's go ahead and let's just jump right into the code. Let's actually take a look at the finished code that I have first. This is all the finished code right here in no particular order but I am going to put it in order for you to help you better understand what's going on. So this is all of the CSS and then down here at the bottom we have all this giant CSS for this small bit of HTML code that we actually have in the body of our HTML document. All right, let's go ahead and let's jump into the clear shot of this. So as you can see here, we have the basis of an HTML document. We have our doc type already declared. We have our classic HTML header. Here we have our style tags where the magic of the CSS is going to happen. I don't have any CSS here for you right now, so I'm going to put it here in a second to explain to you everything step by step as best as I possibly can. And then right here in our body, we have our HTML code where the actual cards are going to be represented. Now, from here, we're going to actually work backwards in a way because I'm actually going to we're going to actually start with the inner div class here and actually well no let me actually say we're going to actually have to start with the label class and then we're going to work our way down into the inner workings of the actual cards so I was wrong on saying that we're going to work backwards we actually have to design and, and declare some things for the label in order to get what's inside to show up okay so without further ado let's go ahead and let's show you the CSS code All right, so we have the first half of our CSS code. This is the style of the front and back of the cards. Here we have our label dec our label values already declared, and I've added some comments to better explain what the perspective is for, what this actual prefix is for, but let me talk about the prefix. The prefix here, WebKit, and there's also two others, hyphen O and like hyphen MOZ for Mozilla Firefox, but right now I just have this for Google Chrome, and for Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge, now Microsoft Edge. And this is to make sure that the, the, this part of the code is actually going to be fully supported in the browser. That's what the prefixes are usually there for. We can also see it repeated here. Now, perspective. When defining a perspective property for an element, it is the child elements that get the perspective view, not the element itself. So if we go down here and we look at the HTML code and we see our label, we see that it's going to be the input and actually from here it's going to be the the actual child element within or right underneath the input element and we can see that it's going our div with the class of serve card holder is going to be one that's going to be affected and let me show you this actually in the w3 schools now we can actually see that the child element here within the in the first part is actually the element that's effective, affected by the perspective declared value. All right, so we can see that the actual div number two is laying down flat horizontally. This is the x-axis is going to be, and pay attention to that because this is what's going to actually be flipped on a horizontal level. You may think vertical, but this is actually flipped going from laying down flat to be turned right over I, it, it's where it should be vertical i guess but it's actually on a horizontal plane so i'm not really the mathematician here to really explain the geometry behind that but maybe that's where my math skills um geometrically need to actually improve but let's go back to our actual code and actually this is what the code is actually going to look like without any of the functionality being added to it So from here, we have some other things declared to, to preserve the 3D. That's to make sure that our card, our elements are taken into a 3D plane, a 3D space. 
we have a cursor just using it being set to pointer you may ask me what's the point of that why not just leave it as an arrow so we know that when we're hovering over it it's giving us an indication that this is properly the, the mouse is properly being hovered over our car area the display is going to be blocked so we can make sure that it's a complete object element it's not a text element width is 300 px height is 300 px so anything else within the child element that's declared as 100% height is 100% will fill out to the constraints of the 300 pixels the 300 pixels width and the 300 pixels height we got some spacing around here the 10 px of margin and the z index so that is going to declare to make sure that the this label element has priority to be sent to the top of all the other elements all right so if we look at our serve card holder, our lay element with the class of serve card holder, the position is relative. Height is 100%. Width is 100%. This is also has the same thing, preserve 3D. So when we actually, the functionality that's going to be here for the web, for our transition is going to be the entire properties and values of this element. And it's going to transition at a speed of 600 milliseconds. Same thing with the Z index. So this had, takes precedence over the two child elements that's with inside of it which we actually see here we're targeting now the div serve front all right this has an absolute position so it's absolute this place absolutely within the element of the label of the div uh, of the serve car holder width is 100 percent i'm sorry height is 100 percent width is 100 percent probably didn't really need a border but i do have a border there to make it more visible and I, I'm actually just going to take that off because we really don't need that we don't really need a border right now I'm going to take that now the back face visibility it's going to be hidden because this is here when the card is flipped Goku won't show sorry right, so that's why the back face visibility is hidden right here so when it's flipped Goku won't show all right and border radius is set to I'm actually going to take that off as well we don't really need the border radius for that either so we just got some basics <coughs> all right and then for the back so when we're actually now on the backhand side when it's time to rotate it it'll rotate at 180 degrees when we go ahead and set the functionality in place the back of it will rotate not the front the back the front of the card is going to have the actual functionality if i actually just take you to the front if i click on it if I click on the card itself, the checkbox just keeps showing up. The checkbox is going to fill in with the check mark. That's what's going to happen. All right, so nothing is declared right now, but we can't see Piccolo because the back face visibility is hidden and it's on Goku right now at this moment. Now, if we notice, both of these, these two elements, these two child elements, actually contain two class names within them. Serve front, which actually contains all the 3D the functionality, the, the setup for the functionality properties and values declared within them in these classes, but the front go to Goku simply contains the actual image of Goku and the declarations of the values of that image within that CSS. So if I go to the front of Goku, this class simply is just declaring what type of picture is going to be placed in that class, which is the Goku image here then the background size is going to be covered to make sure it fills up that entire uh, 300 pixel uh, width by height 100 percent no repeat on the background and we don't need to make sure that it's nice and centered so it's the same values also with the piccolo back as well so that's what our these classes are actually going to do for these piccolo for the goku and piccolo illustrations that's inside those elements so that's why we have two classes per element in our HTML. On the second half of our CSS, now this is where the fun begins. We actually have our functionality that is actually added. So on the first part, on the, our first element with the class of flip label, we gave it a pseudo selector of hover. So that way when we hover over it, these are the action that's, actions that it's going to take on the serve card holder, which is why the serve card holder is selected. So basically, this is basically what it's saying. So, hey, when I hover over the label element, take this action on the serve card the div with the class serve card holder and we have our prefix here to make sure that it's going to work in google chrome microsoft edge what have you and it's going to rotate 20 degrees by the 
horizontal axis. Like remember what I said about that perspective earlier? It's going to it's laying down flat on the 3D plane horizontally. Even though like I said the actual function is going to look vertical, it's really pretty much laying down horizontally. We have the box shadow to go ahead and give it the illusion of an actual box that's realistically moving in real time. So that's what this declaration here is for. Alright? So our input we also have our input element here, which you haven't heard me mention much, but we only needed the input for its checkbox ability for the label, which is why this says display none. We don't want it showing up at all. We needed it for its functionality purposes. So after that, we have the pseudo selector of checked and the selector of a plus sign. So when the actual, so that whole thing, when we saw that this was, this part right here is checked, that's what this is. So when it's checked, we need a function. We need a certain type of function or action to take place when this happens. And this box is going to disappear here in a second. And I'm going to explain that here. So check pseudo selector with the plus sign pseudo selector means that the combination of this action with serve card, the div that has the class of serve card holder is going to then transform 180 degrees. So going back here, when I'm hovering over this is going to just kind of tilt at, at least a good 20 degrees, which is why you saw that earlier, which let me go to the actual finished product so I can actually show you that. So when I'm hovering over this, this is the 20 degrees that is actually just kind of lifting up off the ground over us. So when I hover, this is the brief action that's taking place, if I didn't explain that clear enough. So that's why we have this here, hover over the serve card holder. It's hovering and making both cards lift up. You can't see the piccolo because of the back face visibility all right the check box the check plus here is then going to actually have the action where it's going to flip now 180 degrees when we actually click and this is the simulation effect that i was talking about when you actually click technically un when you check the box <laughs> that's what's happening instead of it just being a box that you're going to check it's going to rotate the horizontal plane the horizontal axis by 180 degrees which this is the finished property right here. We're still here. So you can see the difference. Check box. No check box. I just checked the box literally when I'm clicking on it. But now it's at 180 degrees and we can see the backhand side of it. Alright. So the label. Now with the flip class of hover. Then when you check it in the serve car holder now. When we're on the backhand side, it's going to flip another 160 degrees, all right? So we can actually get back to the Goku side of the card. So you need, so when you're actually creating this CSS, you need to create the functionality to happen on both the front hand side and the backhand side. So this is going to rotate 160 degrees to go back to the front hand side of the card. So now I'm going to go ahead and click save here. And then we're going to go back. I'm going to refresh this. And now we have a fully functional 3D animation flip card that's happening. As you can see, when I even hover back over it, we now have the like the 20 degree lift. But this is tilting from the top hand part, which is coming from why in terms of the 160 degrees so when we click on it, it has the same functionality so both sides have the checked functionality to make sure that when you click on either side of the card it's going to flip at its desired notion that you need it to flip on that is going to be it for this video I really do hope that I was able to explain this as simple and as thorough as I possibly could. If there's anything that is unclear in terms of what I talked about in this video, please leave a comment for me below. Make sure that you either subscribe to the channel here or on the right hand side and on the left hand side that you watch the next actual video that's coming up. Thank you guys for watching this. Hope you learned something. God bless y'all. I'll see you in the next video.